I'm James Cahill, long retired professor of Chinese art history at the University of California in Berkeley, living now in Vancouver and embarking on this ambitious series of recorded lectures under the title, A Pure and Remote View, uh, Visualizing Early Chinese Landscape Painting. Um, as some of you know, I've been going around for some years now complaining that uh, Chinese painting specialists of my generation uh, had failed to produce the kind of detailed, uh, comprehensive history of Chinese painting, early Chinese painting, that uh, through the Song Dynasty, that is the late 13th century, that we need. I'm going to be presenting these paintings, discussing them, showing the images, showing uh, details from them. The whole point of this is to keep you uh, uh, sort of speak, uh, riveted to the screen watching, watching the paintings I'm showing. Um, okay, this combination of me talking and, and you watching the picture is exactly what this is all about. And here, this quite wonderful slide represents the upper part of the phoenix. Well, let's look at various things. The, the crest on the head of the bird, a single stroke, curling, uh, thickening and thinning quite beautifully the line defining its neck, which goes down into the wing, doesn't continue, doesn't outline the form at all. It ends in a kind of spiral, open, wide open. The wing here doesn't end, uh, isn't continuous. There's a gap. Uh, the tail is not attached to the body. And these two long plumes, beautiful, which are turned into some kind of animals themselves by having heads with eyes. These two long plumes are not attached to the body. In other words, uh, it's a very, uh, what's really important is that we don't have something that is simply outlined and inclined at all. The image is produced, that is, as a structure or a configuration of brush strokes. Now it's important, very important to note this. It's already a break with the basic means of simply drawing a line around the thing as, as is done basically in the other painting, the one of the man. Uh, a really very important break. We were given a kind of visual connection, allowing us to imagine moving up the stairway uh, through a kind of passageway, or ravine maybe, uh, to, uh, to get to the upper section. And then once we're up there, what we see is, here is the, here's the upper section now, uh, pine trees. Uh, the, um, you can see here in the very middle, or a little below the middle of the painting, that re-emergence of the red railing, which, uh, connects us with the, uh, the entry down below. And then here we see the terrace, uh, very much like the ones in the much later pictures I showed, with the two old men playing uh, Wei Qi, and then a third standing in this case beside them. And then behind it is the, are the uh, palaces of paradise. On the other side of the river, uh, waiting for the ferry, uh, here are two figures, uh, again, one of them in white, one of them in a kind of a purple, um, and flowering trees bringing out the season again, and, can, uh, and another uh, little villa or some kind of architectural thing over here on the far left. Okay, um, as well as a kind of movement from right to left as you roll, but also movement as you, so to speak, cross the river with the boat and come upon the figures who are waiting for the ferry. Next, please. The last slide, here they're up close. As I say, figures like this are drawn with white just to sometimes as undercoating, and there would have been painting over this. For instance, the faces of the figures probably would have been drawn, but this comes off uh, with time. And then you can see the dotted colors of the trees, the one on the upper left with red uh, blossoms, the one down below, uh, yellow or, or maybe leaves, and so forth. Anyway, full of, full of uh, beautiful detail, uh, full of decorative detail, and so forth. Um, still a, a fine work. Well, um, all, all these are qualities that will disappear from landscape in the next few centuries, which has much more serious purposes than entertainment, which is largely what this one uh, gives us. Now the lower right portion of the scroll, uh, here in the uh, above, you see more servants um, uh, carrying sacks of grain and, 
and scooping it up and measuring it and so on. And then people coming by boat and lending at these lendings from which they can carry the grain sacks up above. And then across the, uh, across the stream or river or whatever it is, uh, <clears throat> is this inn with this construction in front, which, as I say, is a uh, sort of advertising, really. I mean, it's proclaiming this to be an inn to attract people. It's not a construction, in other words. And it's built presumably out of wood or bamboo uh, members. V quite intricate piece of drawing. You imagine trying to draw something like this with, uh, you know, th things seen through things. Uh, well, we'll see as we go along. The next, please. Now, in the upper story of this inn, uh, here at the sort of upper right, people are having a banquet in in one in this upper uh, uh, room, and you see them through the window, and then over here on the left is a figure seen through another open window, half seen. This figures half seen in the doorway zone are, are popular in early Chinese art. There, I could you could make a whole lecture out of those, a number of them, and they attract us with our with their color. So <clears throat> we look down inside up. We look inside this building, so to speak, and are able to see what is going on inside. The artist also makes us feel as though we were looking down into spaces between the buildings. Again, the next please. Here is this expo, uh, as I say, uh, something that, uh, that uh, encourages exploration. And you actually see between the roofs uh, various uh, bits of architecture and whatever is down below. So it, it really encourages, as I say, it almost demands this kind of looking, 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 and finding more and more. And here you see, by the way, at the left, this uh, construction. Well, as I've said many times, you you have to imagine that all this done by in a system where you can't really uh, correct. You can, uh, there's a certain amount of overlapping here. I mean, the artist sometimes doesn't bother to uh, continue his lines or cross other lines, but mostly it's distinct. And <clears throat> in the very first lecture, second lecture rather, I showed already in the Han Dynasty the device of having nearer things drawn in heavier line and further things in lighter line. And here you see it, marvelously used to give space to this intricate structure. The further side drawn in notably lighter line. By the way, on the far side, there's a flag hanging there saying wine or new wine or something like that, advertising. So yeah, you actually look through this intricate structure, intricately drawn, uh, with all the the parts of it tied together with a uh, little string or ropes or whatever. Uh, and you see this flag advertising it. And then, okay, the next please. Uh, down below, as I mentioned, the um, uh, one could do a study of Chinese barrows, wheelbarrows, uh, barrows of various kinds for carrying things, just from this painting. Um, and there's an ox here who presumably pulls one of them. The one nearest to us here has on it a what seem to be uh, pack backpack uh, frames, which uh, people can they can use then to carry the the, the heavy loads of grass of, of excuse me of grain uh, to the uh, to the mill. Okay, the next, the last slide for this <laughs> this extraordinary painting. Here is the opening the the entrance to the to the um, inn. And in addition to this tall uh, ornamental uh, structure outside, there is a screen which is always set up in front of doorways like this, keep evil spirits from coming in, whatever. So you have to walk around this screen to, uh, to get in. And you look down between the screen and the, uh, the wall of the, uh, the entrance to the inn, and you see a servant half cut, aw cut off here, wearing a cap, you see, uh, sort of looking around the thing as if sort of inviting you in. Well, most extraordinary of all, you look further and you'll find that you can look across the room to the further wall and you see, you see two scrolls of calligraphy hanging there on the further wall. My God, this is amazing. I mean, it really, what the artist shows you and the, the invitations that the artist offers to you are quite amazing. And it seems you never quite exhaust the spaces uh, and the intricacies and the 
uh, details and the rewards of looking that this scroll offers. The uh, You do see, by the way, a much more shortened sign saying, new wine, is there some kind of wine anyway? Advertising wine on the frame. Okay, enough for that. Uh, enough for that quite amazing painting. Here at the, uh, the sections I say in the center right, uh, very important. First of all, we can see already the sheer refinement of execution of the painting. It's extraordinary in this way. It's amazing. The drawing of the trees, the drawing of the rocks, everything in it is done in brushwork that you don't really, aren't really conscious of. Uh, it, it is so fine, so uh, free of mannerism, so sort of natural in a sense. I'll talk about that too. Okay, here we have a uh, a uh, hollow, misty hollow in the uh, in the mountains, and a Buddhist temple set in it, set behind trees, a row of trees across the middle ground here, tall pine trees, leafy trees, bear trees in the upper left, and we have a, a stream or river pouring down from one pool to another, quite beautifully painted, and uh, then these great ovoid uh, masses of earth surrounding it, making up the landscape proper. Up here in the upper right, something we haven't seen before in uh, hanging scroll paintings, which is a, um, a, a kind of, on a um, kind of ledge here, behind the two crossed pine trees, is a tingzu, or uh, pavilion, kiosk, whatever you want to translate it. Uh, anyway, a, a little building where people can sit. Actually, you see two bucket seats inside, I think and sit and gaze out over the landscape. Now, this is not a landscape that's made to be gazed at, like some we've already seen, and more we'll see later in this lecture, not at all. This is still very much the landscape, complete in itself, which you can move through, wander through, find your way through, and so on, live in, so to speak, as Guashi says. On the other hand, uh, this, the, the placement of this, uh, of this little pavilion suggests the possibility, at least, of someone sitting there and, um, and gazing out over the landscape. Okay, we'll come back to this section later. Let's start at the bottom now and, and make our way up. Down here at the bottom of the picture, on the left side of this large mass with uh, surmounted by trees, uh, is one of the uh, two little passages of daily life or low life, or whatever, living. On the other side, which I don't have a detail, we see fishermen. Here is a family that is coming back from some trip, I guess, or a journey at any rate, uh, a boat moored, a man carrying luggage over his shoulders, a woman, a uh, child on her shoulder, another child walking beside her. And then here at the lower right, we see there was something of their house, a, a simple fence, a thatched roof. Okay, and this, by the way, uh, the, the outlines, as you see, have to be quite thick, heavy, in order to hold their own, to fulfill their function within a hanging scroll. And they are kind of fluctuating in width, and, um, and the landscape masses you see already are, are, are uh, not textured exactly, but treated with uh, some sense of light and shadow by more or less application of ink. 